Vapor Density. Hi, I'm Craig Duck, President and Missionary of the Fellowship of Christian Firefighters here with another Tailboard Talk Group discussion. Today we're going to be looking at vapor density and how that relates to today's firefighters and first responders. That's right, I said vapor density. And some of you are saying, whoa, what do I need to know that for? I just wanna fight fire. I just wanna take that hose line in, sling water, put it out, be the hero, whatever it takes. But being the hero means you need to know about vapor density. It is mission critical that we as firefighters understand the importance of the chemicals that we're responding to. There's more chemicals today in these fires than previous generations that are coming up with new stuff all the time. And so we have to know how are these chemicals reacting and what is our steps of operation uh, when we're tasked with uh, getting rid of them. What do I mean by that? So vapor density. Vapor density simply is the density of a particular vapor or gas as it relates to air. Now, the scientists would be saying, no, you're wrong. It's, it's as it relates to nitrogen. Yes, but nitrogen and, and air are pretty close. Air has been assigned a one, and so that any vapor that you're looking at, if it has a, a, a number that is less than one, we know that it's gonna rise, that it's lighter than air. If it has a vapor density of greater than one, we know that it's gonna sink to the bottom, it is heavier. So why is that important? If we're running a propane uh, incident, a leaking tank inside a structure, uh, we should be known as we're sizing up, we should, be, we should be thinking, okay, if I have to ventilate this place, we're gonna ventilate from the bottom up. If it's natural gas, on the other hand, we know that's lighter than air, so we're going to ventilate from the top down. If we make a mistake, uh, that, that could be a critical mistake and it could lead to injuries or death. So if you have a propane, and that's lower, we've established, and then you go in to ventilate uh, up in the attic, now you might be getting uh, that uh, vapor that is in there, that gas, might now get in the right mixture when it's in its flammable range, and then it could explode, catch fire. So we want to make sure that we're doing uh, the proper uh, task, we're, we're doing it in the right way. Uh, I remember when I was a lieutenant in Washington, D.C., uh, we had just a little acronym to help us with gases that are lighter than air. Uh, new caca or new cha cha it was. And you're like, holy cow, what is that? And so that's just a little thing. They're not all the gases that are lighter than air, but uh, each of the letters stands for a gas. So new, it would be nitrogen, uh, ethylene, and wood gas. For the, for the caca or cha cha, it's going to be carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, um, hydrogen, helium, ammonia, and acetylene. And so that would give us an indicator, uh, again, as we're riding down the road, uh, what we might be coming up against. You might have other ways of memorizing it. Certainly the hazmat gurus are gonna, uh, gonna do their research on the way and once they get there uh, before starting anything. But uh, as first responders, as those that are on the scene, we wanna make those proper um, uh, assessment and we wanna have proper tactics so that everybody goes home. So what does this have to do about our faith? What does the Bible say about vapor and vapor density? Check out what James has to say in James chapter 4. And he says this in verse 14, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist or vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Right, so we are here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, life is short. We should know that as firefighters and first responders. We're running tragedies where people are dying all the time. They never knew that it was, it was their time to go. Think of September 11th, 2001. Uh, those firefighters the night before were getting ready for work. They didn't know that their life was going to be changed, that it was going to end uh, that very next day. And same with the police officers and EMS folks uh, and those going to work. And so we need to understand that uh, our life is simply like a vapor. Like that uh, lighter than air vapor that's escaping from a cylinder, right? It comes out of that cylinder, it's in a cloud, you can see it, but then it's going to rise up in the air and just uh, that quick it is going 
going to be gone. That is what our life is like. And so we need to focus as Christian firefighters and first responders on pleasing God, on obeying biblical truths. Day by day, we should be reading and studying our Bibles and learning what God has for us. We should be glorifying Him in the fire service, in the department that He has allowed us uh, to, to be a part of. And, and uh, we can be that light and that salt. You know, there are firefighters all around that have no hope and don't know what to do. They're discouraged. They're, they just, they're just at their wit's end. And we as Christian firefighters, we should be able to come alongside them, encourage them, lift them up, and, and let them know that there is a God that loves them and a God that wants to forgive their sins and so give them eternal life. And so we should do that. Uh, don't wait for tomorrow to do this because, like James would say, tomorrow may never come. Uh, your life might be ended and you might be, uh, again, like that ga that lighter than air gas that is, es is escaping. So, so uh, give God your best uh, every day. Uh, don't wait till tomorrow and uh, glorify Him in the fire service that He has called you to.